Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Andrew Tehemi Tiowa. I lecture physical chemistry in the Department of Chemistry, Benue State University, Makadi, Nigeria. Welcome to my general physical chemistry lecture series, which are meant for my students here at Benue State University, as well as my global audience. If you'd like to send me an email, you can do that via my Google email or my university email below the uh, cover slide. Today's lecture is about the Yukovic equation, or derive the Yukovic equation. So after the lecture, you'll learn how to derive the Yukovic equation. The Yukovic equation gives the relationship between diffusion current and concentration of the oxidized or reduced species in polarography. This equation was derived by Yukovic between 1933 and 1934 during his PhD with Nobel laureate Hirovsky. The Yukovic equation is based on the Cotri equation, which is in turn based on Fick's first and second laws of mass transport. The Cotri equation was derived by Frederick Garner Cotri in 1903. And fixed laws were formulated by Rudolf Fick in 1855. So what is polarography? Polarography is a form of voltmetry where the cathode working electrode is a dropping or static mercury electrode. Here is a simple setup of voltmetry um, using planar electrodes. This is the conventional voltmetry. Uh, the standard one, um, using a uh, planar working electrode and planar reference electrode. This is the analyte solution. And this is connected to some voltage supply. The voltmeter is linked to it to measure the voltage that is being delivered into the system. An ammeter is there to measure the current across the system. In voltmetry, information about an analyte um, electroactive species, either in the oxidized or reduced form, is obtained by measuring the current as a function of applied potential. Um, this is done under conditions that promote polarization of the working electrode. So here is a setup for polarography, uh, replacing voltmetry. This is the analyte solution. This is the reference electrode. And this is the dropping mercury cathode. And this setup is connected to some voltage source. And there is an ammeter there to measure the current across the setup. Nitrogen is bubbled in to get rid of some oxygen that may be in there. And this setup is then used um, to determine information about um, the analyte solution. So this is what happens during polarography. Um, the mercury reservoir releases some mercury drop. In the process, before that happens, there is no current. As the drop begins to form and develop, current increases with time. At the point where the mercury drop falls, the current disappears, and once the mercury drop begins to develop, the current reemerges again. So here is an amplification um, of what is happening in between here. This is the capillary through which the mercury drop goes into the setup. And this is the mercury drop itself. And this is the oxidized species um, uh, diffusing to the surfaces of the mercury drop electrode. Because this is an oxidized species, the reaction at the electrode surface will be reduction, where the species gain some electrons and become reduced. Uh, before we derive the 
uh, Euclidic equation. Let us first of all derive the quad free equation upon which uh, the uh, Euclidic equation is based on. So from fixed first law, the number of moles of species diffusing across an area, say A, is proportional to the concentration gradient. Mathematically, this can be written in terms of equation 1. And this is the gradient we're talking about. This is concentration gradient developing uh, between the bulk of the solution and the electrode surface. Uh, a, plan a planar electrode, in this case, that's what we are uh, basing our derivation on. Um, Mz plus prime represents the concentration of the oxidized species at the, at, the, at the distance x from the electrode surface. Z represents the charge on the oxidized species, which happens to equal the number of electrons transferred. Uh, D is the diffusion coefficient of the oxidized species as the current across the electrode. And this is equal to the number of, of uh, species passing by time times the charge times the area of the electrode times the Faraday's constant. We can write this mathematically in terms of equation 2. And because we've got this expression here, and we've got that there, and this expression is equal to this, we can substitute this into this um, equation. And that gives this expression. According to equation 2, the current depends on concentration gradient, that is um, how steep this is or how uh, much of the ions are in solution and less of it are on at, at the electrode surface. However, because these ions are being uh, diffused um, and being diffused to the surfaces of the electrode and as a result, they are being reduced. Their concentration at the vicinity of the electrode is going to be changing continuously. So the concentration of the oxidized species change with time. So according to Fick's second law, the change in concentration of the oxidized species with time is proportional to the second derivative of the concentration gradient with a proportionality constant at D which represents the diffusion coefficient of the oxidized species. So equation 3 is a differential equation that can be solved by um, a separation of variables. So you can see this, this, this solution in the textbook of Nestor, Electrochemistry and Corrosion Science, second edition, published by Springer in 2016. The solution of equation three gives this. Uh, this is the concentration gradient is now equal to this based on the solution of the differential equation, that is equation three um, here. So this is the concentration of the electrode surface at time t equal to zero. Because current is equal to this expression, look here is the concentration gradient. And because we now have concentration gradient to be equal to this, we can simply substitute this expression there. That gives equation five. And equation five rearranges to equation six, which is the quadrate equation. Now this Equation is based on a planar electrode whose surface area can be determined quite readily once the perimeters are known. That's the quantities, the length, the breadth, the thickness. However, how do we apply the same equation to a mercury drop which is forming in a system we don't have access to? access in the sense that we can directly uh, go into the system to measure the size of the uh, mercury drop 
and then find its area. This was the question Kotri, um, this was the question Yukovic asked. And he wanted to find the area vis-a-vis -vis the uh, spherical mercury drop. So derivation of the Yukovic equation. The mercury drop is spherical, so its surface area can be approximated to the area of a sphere. So this is the mercury drop, this is the radius of the mercury drop, and the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, which represents the surface area of the mercury drop. But there is a question, what is the radius of the mercury drop? We don't know, and we can't measure it because it's been formed in the system. We can go in and measure the size of the uh, mercury drop to find the, the radius. Additionally, as the drop size increases, the radius increases as well. So it is now difficult to even know the precise radius of the mercury drop. However, we can know precisely the mass flow rate of mercury in milligrams per second. Uh, we know the time it will take for the mercury drop to fall, uh, that is get to this stage. And once we know the mass, we can relate the mass to the volume and the density. So what is the volume of the mercury drop? V, 4 over 3 pi r cube. Um, we've got radius again appearing in the volume. Let's make r the subject of the formula. We obtain this expression. And in terms of density, we multiply mass, flow rate times time gives us mass, divided by volume gives us the density. If we make V the subject of the formula and substitute it into this expression and then substitute the resultant equation into equation 7 for radius, then we obtain the surface area of the mercury drop in accordance with Yukovic. Of course, this is density. So when the area is substituted into the Cotre equation, we obtain equation 10. This is the area. Every other parameter remains the same uh, with respect to the Cotre equation. However, there are two uh, important forms of diffusion current in polarography. We've got the maximum diffusion current and the average current. The average current lies in between this wavy uh, polarogram, where the maximum current lies at the peak of the polarogram. The density of mercury is 13,600 milligrams per cm cube. Faraday's constant is 96,500 coulombs per mole, and pi is 22 all over 7. So to obtain the maximum diffusion current, the Kovic substituted these values into equation 10 and multiplied the resultant equation by a correction factor of 7 all over 3 to the power of half. That gave equation 11 and equation 11 evaluates to equation 12, which is the Yukovic equation for maximum diffusion current. To obtain the average current, Kovic multiplied the, uh, the maximum diffusion current by a correction factor of 6 all over 7. That led to equation 13, and equation 13 evaluates to equation 14 which is the average diffusion current uh, in terms of Kovic equation. Thanks for watching this video. A link to the PDF version of this video is in the video description. If you like this video, uh, 
If you enjoy the video, you can like it, you can subscribe, so that whenever I upload a video, you will be alerted by YouTube. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them. Or you can send me comments by email or questions by email at my um, Google email and or my university email. Uh, once again, thank you for watching. Yeah, um, I should mention to you that I had produced a video in the past about using the Yukovic equation to solve simple numerical problems. Please go watch the video for the application of the Yukovic equation. Bye.